Safari, one of the most effective techniques across the entire globe for catching largemouth bass in any season is using soft stick baits. These things work when bass are aggressive. They also work when bass are just completely tight-lipped, lock-jawed, and won't touch anything. Now, fishing them requires a ton of patience. The worst thing you can do is be too aggressive and too eager, that will ensure you don't get a lot of bites. So I've come to my neighborhood pool again today to do a pool test to compare some different soft stick baits. Now the good news is, since the last pool test, they actually cleaned the pool. I mean, there's a few leaves in there, but nothing like it was last time. And just like in previous pool tests, I got my son Joel helping me out. He's doing some rigging for me right now. Also got the trusty rake. Put the GoPro mounted on the end. Now before I show you the baits, I need to let you know we're gonna be testing them four ways. One is just a traditional Texas rig, weightless of course. Then we're gonna fish a wacky rig. Then we're gonna work a wacky, then we're gonna work a wacky. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> then we're gonna work a weighted wacky rig. And then finally, we're gonna do a Nico rig, a technique that is definitely gaining a ton of popularity across the nation because it's very, very productive. Now, all of these techniques are generally designed to catch bass, but trust me, they work for speckled trout and redfish too, particularly on those days when nothing else seems to produce bites. But let's show you what we got. All right, first off is the original, the Gary Yamamoto Senko. A lot of anglers, man, this is just their favorite bait. We're gonna see how it looks compared to some others. These things are not cheap, trust me. We've also got the Strike King Shimmy Stick, the Strike King Ocho, the Strike King Zero. Now this bait is kind of unique in that it's made with a tech, a different type of plastic. It's much more buoyant than traditional soft plastics. We've also got the Berkeley Power Bait General. Over here we got the Missile 48. Then we got the Cajun Lures Baton, then the Yum Dinger, and finally the Big Bite Baits trick stick. This is going to be an exciting pool test, especially since there's a wide variance between price in these baits. We'll see if the more expensive baits warrant that higher price. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. All right, we're getting rolling with the pool test, but there are a couple of technical things I need to let you know of ahead of time. First of all, I'm throwing all these baits on the same rod and reel. It's a Shimano Corrado, six foot, 10 inches, medium power, extra fast action. That's very, very important. But will take up some line when those fish hit the bait. Spooled on this, I have 15 pound braided line and then attached to that is a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader tied with a shins knot. And as you can see, first up is the Senko, just traditional Texas rig. We're gonna see how this looks in the water. This is gonna be fun. All right, this is the master and it's clear to see why. The Seiko really snakes on each twitch. And it's got a tremendous amount of shimmy on each fall. Look at that, that's just beautiful. All right, so I'm not commenting on any of these baits until I'm at home and I see the underwater footage. Even though it's very tempting because the one I just worked looked pretty good. But anyway, this is a Strike King shimmy stick. It's a little bit scented, it smells pretty good. But let's see how it looks underwater. All right, the shimmy stick really doesn't live up to its name. It doesn't have a whole lot of shimmy on each fall. And also on the twitches, it just kind of looks stiff. You can see in slow motion, there's a little bit of tail action, but just not a whole lot.
All right, next up is the Strike King Ocho. And as the name implies, this thing is octagonal. It's got eight sides. And I don't know if it smells good to bass, but I can tell you it definitely smells good to me. It smells like coffee. Let's see how it looks. All right, the best feature of the Ocho is kind of its snaking action on each twitch. It doesn't have a ton of shimmy on the fall. But it's really erratic on the twitch. All right, next up is the Strike King Zero. Now remember, this is the one made of Elastec. It's extra stretchy, right? Lasts a lot longer, but it's more buoyant. Now there is some salt in this that's so gonna help it to sink. Let's see how it looks. All right, I gotta admit, I expected not to like this bait, but I really, really like it. Look how much it snakes on each twitch, and it's also got really good shimmy on each fall. Boy, you can really see that snaking action here in slow motion. All right, next up is the Power Bait Max Scent General. This bait seems really stiff above water. We'll see if that impacts the action below water. All right, it's clear the general was designed for anglers who put more credence into scent than they do into sight. The bait just does not look that good. Very, very stiff on both the twitch and the fall. All right, now we got the Missile Baits 48. Now what's unique about this one is it's got kind of a, a tapered midsection. The ends are much more bulbous than the middle. It's designed to give it more action on the fall. Let's see if it does. All right, that tapered middle gives the 48 some really erratic action. You can see in slow motion, it looks pretty good on the fall. All right, next up is the Cajun Lures Baton. Now here in South Louisiana, we would say baton. But let me tell you, this thing, it is garlicky, man. It smells like grandma's marinara. <laughs> you know, garlic, a lot of times, will get those bass to hold on to a bait a lot longer. Seems to have a lot of action above water. Let's see if it does below water. All right, the baton doesn't have a tremendous amount of shimmy on the fall. It's a really buoyant bait, falls very slowly. but it looks excellent on each twitch. All right, next up is the Yum Dinger. Let's take a look. All right, I've never had great success on the Yum Dinger, and now I know why. The bait just does not look good underwater. 
It's really stiff. It's not erratic on a twitch, and it's got no shimmy on the fall. I'm guessing the bass think this was a stick that fell out of a tree. All right, and the final bait we're testing is the Big Bite Baits Trick Stick. Let's take a look. All right, the Trick Stick looks better than some of the baits, but only slightly. Got a little bit of erratic action on the twitch and some shimmy here and there on the fall. But really, there are some better options. All right, that's it for the traditional rigging. Now we're gonna transition over to the weightless wacky rigs. And for that, we've got some one odd. VMC Wheelless Wacky Hooks. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Matrix Shad. And by Fitzgerald Fishing. And by Cito New Orleans. And by Versamax Quartz. And by Magnolia Vodka. All right, rigging is essential for this presentation. And here in South Louisiana, we have tons of submerged aquatic vegetation. Fishing anything weedless is almost always essential. So you rig this right in the middle, just straight through the bait, and then pull this little hook guard down where it catches just under the barb. And when a fish hits, and you set the hook, it puts pressure here, exposes the hook, at least most of the time. You do lose more fish rigged this way, but hey, you can't fish these baits with just an exposed hook in a lot of areas, at least down here. So let's see how this looks. All right, look at the shimmy on the fall of the Senko. That's exactly what you want soft stick baits to do. I've gotta say it again, this thing just looks fantastic. All right, the shimmy stick actually looks a little bit better on a weightless wacky rig than it did Texas rigged. It certainly got some shimmy on that fall. All right, the Ocho also has some decent rocking action on the fall. And that's so critical in getting those bass to bite when they're just staring at the bait, debating whether or not they should.
The zero once again just looks fantastic on the fall. Lots and lots of shimmy. And just some really erratic action. This bait performed much better in the first two tests than I expected it to. All right, the general, once again, if you're planning on using it, you better hope the fish can smell it. <laughs> The bait springs back to form almost instantly and has very little action on the fall. All right, the Missile 48 definitely had more action on each twitch than the General. And it's got a little wobble on the falls. But all in all, there are probably some better options. Right, the baton really falls slowly. This first clip is not in slow motion. This is just how slowly this bait is falling. Now it's got some more erratic action on each twitch than some baits but definitely not as good as others. And it falls too slowly to elicit a lot of action on the way down. All right, there's really not a whole lot that makes the yum dinger endearing when rigged this way. It's really stiff and just doesn't move a whole lot. All right, like the dinger, the trick stick springs back to form very, very quickly. Unlike the dinger though, it does have a little bit of action on the fall. All right, so next up is the weighted wacky rig. We've got a 1 16th ounce jig head for that. And it does have a little bit of a weed guard on it, as you can see. 
All right, the Senko looked great on a weightless wacky rig. And it also does on a weighted wacky rig. The ends of that bait are just shaking back and forth, waving at the bass on each fall. You can really see how good it looks in slow motion. All right, the shimmy stick looks much better with a weighted presentation than it did weightless. That weight pulling the bait down causes the ends of the bait to wave back and forth. The Ocho 2 has a lot of action in this weighted presentation. The bait just really moves a whole lot on the fall. All right, as much as I liked the Zero when it was presented weightless, that's how much I hate it with this weight. This bait looks awful. I guess they call it the Zero because that's precisely how many fish you'll catch on it if you fish it this way. All right, we finally found a presentation the general is not terrible at. With this weighted wacky rig, it does have a little bit of action on the fall. Not ridiculously good, but definitely better than some. All right, the Missile 48 is pretty much a dud with this weighted wacky rig. The bait falls over pretty well on a twitch, but it doesn't have a whole lot of action at all on the fall. All right, if you remember, we talked about the buoyancy of the baton, and that seems to really help it with this presentation. The bait has just a tremendous amount of wobble on each fall. 
you can really see it exceptionally well in slow motion. Okay, I guess we'll be nice and say this is the best the Yum Dinger has looked on any of the presentations. It's got some shimmy on each fall. but it definitely does not look as good as some of the baits. All right, the trick stick has a fair amount of shimmy on each fall. I've seen some baits that look better, but I've also seen some that look worse. All right, we got three of our four tests done. Now we're gonna do the final one. I'm really excited to see how these baits look on a Nico rig. If you aren't familiar with the Nico rig, gaining a ton of popularity nationally because it's very, very productive. Now you need a few specific pieces of gear to tie a Nico rig, one of which is a nail weight. This is a Big Bite Baits brand. These are 132nd ounce. We don't have a lot of deep water here in Louisiana, so you don't need a ton of weight here. Now, some more northern lakes, you want to go up to 1 16th, maybe even 3 30 seconds to get the bait down a little bit more quickly. But this will work well for us. So I'm going to show you how to rig this. Here's our Senko. Now, every one of these baits has a, a head and a tail. The tail is more tapered. As you can see, the head is more blunt. So you take your nail weight, shove it into the head side. All right, the next thing you need are these Nico hooks. I'll show you how these look. All right, there's a one-on hook. Obviously, it's got the weed guards on it, which we definitely want here. Not for our pool, although we do have some leaves in there. But here in Louisiana, where we fish, got lots of grass, so these are important. So the way you rig this, you go about, I don't know, I'm gonna say maybe an inch and a half down, and you wanna rig this hook toward the tail. Just go about halfway through the bait, and pierce it back out, so you fish it exposed, just like that. All right, what I look for in this Nico presentation is how much action the bait has on the twitch and also how long it stands up after it hits bottom. Certainly the Senko looks pretty good in both regards. The shimmy stick also has some pretty good action on the twitch. And there's that nice momentary pause of the bait once it hits bottom. All right, the Ocho looks pretty good on the Twitch. But the bait falls flat to the bottom way too quickly.
Man, the Zero really looks good rigged this way. Tremendous action on each Twitch. As well as on the Falls. And the bait stands up pretty well. All right, the general looks just really, really terrible on this Nico rig. You'd be better off just throwing it on your hook, throwing it out there and hoping to catch a catfish. All right, the Missile 48 has some decent action on the Twitch. But it looks like the bait is just dying to hug the bottom. All right, the baton looks to be the perfect Nico bait. Excellent action on each twitch. And boy, that bait just really stands up and is tantalizing to any bass that happens to be in the area. The buoyancy of this bait really aids it as a Nico rig. All right, the dinger's actually not horrible as a Nico rig. The bait has some decent action on the Twitch and also pauses for a moment before it falls to the bottom. This is also probably the best presentation we've seen for the trick stick. It looks pretty good rig Nico style. Good action on the uptake and a momentary pause on the fall. Man, I was really wanting not to like the Senko. It's definitely the most popular of the baits that I tested, and boy, it's really clear to see why. That bait just looked fantastic underwater. Probably not coincidentally, it's also the most expensive bait that we tested. Now, the Baton did finish a close second. It did very well in a couple of categories, actually took a couple of categories, but the Senko was the overall winner, and it's definitely earned. All right, if you got as much out of watching that video as I did putting it together, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you poolside or in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.